The Founder and Force Multiplier team is so excited to have launched the first community that is made for both founders, aka leaders, CEOs, and executives, and Force Multipliers, aka chiefs of staffs, executive assistants, and other Force Multipliers. Our dynamic community is filled with networking opportunities, exclusive events with distinguished guest speakers, access to our courses and on-demand training, and so much more. You can access our community in the show notes below. Today, we are excited to host founder Michael Abramowitz of a company called Braid. Braid has reimagined media interviews in the age of TikTok and Instagram. It helps you create content as a collaborative thread. And best of all, it's efficient, it saves time, and it's dynamic. When I interviewed Michael, Braid was still in beta testing. As of 11-29-2022, Braid is available for download on both Google Play and the Apple App Store. Michael shares his entrepreneurial journey, the challenges he faced, the mental fitness and grit required, and my favorite line from Michael on how entrepreneurship is like a marathon, not a sprint. Michael Abramowitz, thank you so much for coming on to the Founder and Force Multiplier podcast. We at Founder and Force Multiplier love good entrepreneur journeys. We know it's not easy. You've been super inspirational every time we've spoken to you or your team. You're making disruptions in industries and we love, we love, like we totally love that. And so for our audience today, if you don't mind sharing your personal elevator pitch so people get to know you a little bit and then we'll dive in. Yeah, sure. So I'm Michael Abramowitz. I'm the co-founder, CEO of Braid, Braided Inc. You can check us out at braided.com. Uh, Braid is a platform that reimagines the way you conduct a media interview. So instead of doing it as a live recording like this, you do it as a collaborative thread. So you as the host could record yourself asking me a question. I get notified. I can do a couple takes and post back to it. it takes a lot of the anxiety out of creating an interview like this off the table. I'm um, Really passionate about what we're working on. So I've done a lot of different entrepreneurship, built a lot of different software. Love the team wow. I'm working with on this. I think we're building uh, something special and working on an important problem and excited to keep driving it forward every single day. Wow, that's amazing. So tell us a little bit about how you got here. Like what was, what does your journey look like to entrepreneurship? Yeah, so I've always been had that entrepreneurial itch. Um, going back all the way to college, I used to write business plans for business plan competitions. My first job out of college wow. was actually at a startup uh, that went bankrupt my first day of the job. We had written a, <laughs> a business plan the summer before, and then they had raised a bunch of money, and then the credit crunch happened. It was for a co-location facility, so we'd built like a million-dollar hole in the ground and couldn't get the rest of the financing to put it together. And that made me want to study accounting. So I went and got a CPA, kind of needed to understand the way kind of money flows through the business and understand what you're actually doing when you try to, to create a new, a new venture. And uh, after that, um, went and worked in finance and was doing a lot of Excel programming, which made me <laughs> really find a passion for computer programming. I went back and oh, studied, got a master's. Yeah, got a master's in computer science. And then did a startup venture with uh, two friends from grad school. We had a development shop where we partnered with uh, startups and small, medium-sized enterprises and basically discounted our development fees for either equity or revenue share agreements and what they were doing. And so with that, did about 12 different ventures where we basically supplied the, the technology from idea to implementation and watched what happened with those businesses and learned a ton about what it means to go from idea to working software to actually building a business yeah. around that. Um, following that, went and worked back in finance, built some more regulatory systems, and then left and became CTO of a company called Corporate Governance Partners, where we built uh, a platform for productivity tools for boards of directors. And it was there that I got the idea for Braid. So we finished that build oh, wow. kind of right into the lockdowns for uh, yeah. COVID. And we were trying to take it to market. We needed to get really creative with our marketing. So we were going to use interviews as the basis for that. We we're going to interview our customers, our employees, our shareholders. And when we set out to do it, we had a really tough time. You know, it's tough to actually create 
this type of medium. So people were kind of reading off cue cards. We were chopping up, doing some amateurish <laughs> editing. It, uh, none of them really came out that great, but it gave me the idea of, okay, this type of media is really important. It's ubiquitous. It's all, it's everywhere. Interview style content, discussion oriented content. Right. And the way it's being created and shared doesn't really line up with today's audiences and intention, attention spans. So there's a better way to do this. And that's where the idea for Braid kind of originated. And so I, the idea just wouldn't go away and then went full time on it about a year ago. And uh, it's been a journey since then. Wow. So I'm feeling super old school for having an old school way of uh, conducting an interview. <laughs> Thanks, well, Michael. <laughs> yeah, next one, we could do a follow-up well, braid on this. Yeah. We're totally doing a follow-up braid on this. We're totally <laughs> doing it. And um, we actually just also signed up and we're beta testing in braid. So we um, also need to try it out because I feel like what happens is, and I think this is where you're solving um, a lot of the problems we have, but like I'm asking somebody to take time out of their day and we're in a very fast paced change environment and a lot, an hour to do an interview that they have to sit and sort of do it in one go. What I like about the braid concept is as there is time, as we create the thread, we not only are creating this holistic interview, but you also have engagement, right? From outside yes. parties. So sort of like creating this um, interview with a community of engagement and it's driving, you know, different questions and different answers. And I kind of like it. Like, it's not just me sitting there and interviewing, right? It's it's a whole engagement platform. And that's, that's reimagining sort of our social platforms today, right? Yeah, so you kind of hit the nail on the head. From an audience perspective, they can follow a braid. So that means they would get notified as the questions and answers come in, as the discussion evolves. And they can come in, like, comment, share each of those individual posts and help direct the conversation. So that if you said something that really struck a nerve with me as an audience member, I could jump in with a comment. And you can either address that with a follow-up post, respond in the comments, or even create a braid directly with me as the audience member who commented on your post. So that creates a really special experience for a fan or somebody who really loves what you're doing. You're such a bad A. Eh? Can I say that on uh, an interview? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we, we've come a long way with this thing and I'm, I'm really, really proud of it. I think it, it's basically, we had the idea, we did some designs. We went out and talked to tons and tons of creators and basically got a lot of validation to help inform the direction of the product. And then we started building it, got it into the hands of some early creators. It was a really, really rough product when they first got their hands on it. But even in that rough product, we could see that they were finding value in it, which was the, the best kind of validation you can get. If you can ship something that's really, really janky, but people are willing to look past all of those flaws and continue to use it, that means you've got something special. And so yeah. that was back in March, and we've continued to build and iterate it and refine it, and now we're getting ready to make it live and publicly available, and I've been going back and forth with app stores, mostly around content moderation, which is important. We want to do a good job with. We want right. to protect everyone involved, yeah. So you mentioned a couple times, right, this has been a journey. Um, you sort of have always had an entrepreneur inkling. The journey has not been easy, all right? Right now, people are hearing like the end part of it where you're, you know, refined your product and you're still in like rapid prototyping, I'm sure, but you've refined your product and you're going to get it out there. Tell us a little bit about, you know, the challenges you faced as you've gone through this journey um, and what lessons did you take from it that others can apply as they're starting their entrepreneur journey? Yeah, I think the, I mean, the one lesson with anyone trying to start an entrepreneurial journey is you genuinely have to be passionate about what you are, the undertaking you're, you're making, because there's no way it's going to be easy. It's like, I think, like chewing glass, they say. So it's you're, you're setting yourself up for a lot of pain. And if you don't really, really love the problem you're working on and the people you're working with to do it, you're never going to make it. It's It's got to be something that you, you wake up every day and despite all of the adversity, you want to keep going. And we, we faced 
lots of adversity. We face lots of technical adversity. So we're a small development team. It's me and two other developers who I've worked with for years on different products. And we love working together, uh, basically love each other's perspectives on things, do it with a lot of craft. And when we built this, we actually got video posts working the day before we put our beta users into it. So we had set up this big launch oh, wow. dinner and it wasn't really working. And then basically we got it working and made our first video posts in the car on the way to the dinner and basically started signing up people into the beta and, and getting them access. So the, yeah. The yeah. So the technical challenges we faced were, were, they've been real. They've been tough. We're working with like very powerful cameras, huge media files, and people want it to be delivered really, really quickly and feel snappy in the application. So those technical challenges have been real. I'm um, getting out in front of creators, getting their attention, trying to find the right people for this has been challenging. Just a lot of, you, you know, Johnny, he's been doing a lot of that work for us and just being yeah. willing to take no's and let it slide right off, understanding who this isn't for as much as who it is for as part of that process. And I think that's something a lot of entrepreneurs need to learn to, to look for. Understanding who your product isn't for is just as important as understanding who it is for. So you don't waste time, resources, effort going after the wrong person. And that's part of those early discussions. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, that's really good advice. What I'm hearing is, A, you really need to believe in the product that you're developing or creating or service. And B, you need to have the right, having the right strategic partners is so much, so impactful that I think it gets missed. Everybody focuses so much on process and, and development and we need to get this out, but they forget that we have a human side, which is mentorship and support and being there in the nitty gritty and, you know, how to be each other's, you're, you're human at the end of the day. So just because you're an entrepreneur doesn't mean you don't, you're not in your fields, right? Definitely. And there are days where you're down. So it helps have these strategic partners who they're having a good day and they're like, hey, remember our mission, remember our goal, remember where we're trying to go. We can do this, right? Because yeah, exactly it's so right. important. We need that. Um, yeah, Simon yeah. Sanook just posted a video about how like entrepreneurs, you know, feel lonely at times because you're, you're focused on such a big undertaking that really there's little capacity left in your life for other things, right? And it can get daunting. Yeah. I mean, I've got a young family. You so saw it. You saw it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm there are a lot of in there. I, I've done a lot of different businesses and I did, did them before I had a young family and like it became all consuming. And then I, I mean, people will say, don't do this with a young family. But I would say for me, it's helped me take those breaks and reconnect with things outside of it and find there's no way you can't like ignore all of that. And so they, they force you to take the breaks that are needed to recharge and take some perspective on what you're working on. And that's, it's actually helped yeah. me to start with. So at, at Founder and Force Multiplier, we sort of talk about, you know, as you're starting, well, even in corporate setting, same thing, but as a CEO, as an executive, as an entrepreneur, you really, 20% of the time you spent has 80% of an impact, right? And so having that space to, to focus on the right 20%, which is, you know, making impactful decisions, going out there and doing business development, getting the funding you need, whatever it may be, right? You, you, it's, it's hard to do without force multipliers in your team that are helping sort of take off things off your plate so you can kind of be in that rail. And then for you, I'm sure it's even harder because you are one of the coders so <laughs> or one of the developers. And so yeah. you sort of have all this, right? Um, do you guys at Braid have that? Do you, do you have people that you've tagged as force multipliers that sort of take off, you know, um, a lot of things off your plate so you can be impactful and drive your company where you want it to go? Yeah, for sure. And like you said, I, I've written a lot of this code myself. So it's a small development team and a, a lot of it, you know, is my blood, sweat and tears going into the code base as well. And so <laughs> that is, I, had, I had a mentor tell me to start tracking my time, right? And so use a simple time tracking tool and to see where the day is going, to see how much is actually going into software development. And so then when you think through allocating resources and, and building out the team, what are the things you want to take off your plate so you can start to do the more important things like you're saying, the business development, 
having an eye on you know the financials of the company and making sure that this thing is sustainable. And that, that was really great advice. So I've been doing that for a couple months now, and it's it's telling. You know, you don't you don't really know where the day goes until you're keeping a close eye on it, and that really is the most precious resource you have. So that that was really great advice. That's great. Yeah, because I mean, I'm kind of in that mode right now. But when you're doing it all, <laughs> yeah. it's it's tough. It's tough. And and yeah. so you know, and I think you know the, the nice thing is yeah. Go ahead. No, I was going to say I forgot to answer your question really there, but for us like. Having those force multipliers, a lot of what has come for me personally is just having done startups and entrepreneurship for a long time and building a Rolodex of like freelancers, attorneys, advisors, people that you can call that, you know, other founders that are in the space to to just bounce ideas off. And even when you're having one of those really stressful days, give you the kick in the butt to keep going. Or if I am coding too much, have another founder be like, hey, you're the founder of this thing. Why are you, you know, debugging a front end issue? You need to be <laughs> getting your hand out of the weeds a little bit. And so that, that comes yeah. through time. That comes through, you know, treating entrepreneurship like a career, treating it like a learning experience, getting knowing that you're not going to be good at it right away, getting better and better at it and building a professional network of the people that are going to help you be effective at it. And I think that that's really why this time around we're having some good success. We like, I have great graphic designers that I've worked with that I don't need to explain what I want. They just come back with something amazing for me. And that's, you know, come from working with a bunch of different ones and finding the great, the great ones. It's, it's right. up and down, up and down the board like that. Wow. Thank you for that. That's amazing. So tell us what stage are you guys in today and what's next? Yeah. So we are in review with the app stores. So that means basically we we're launching on Android and iOS and they, you know, review your code, review different aspects of your product and make sure it's in compliance with their policies and procedures. Right. Um, the big issue because we're a user generated content platform that's come up is content moderation for us. So they've asked us to build in app content moderation. So the ability to report and block users and content. So we are basically coming out towards the end of a crazy two week sprint to put that those uh, pieces in place before we go live and resubmit, which should, we're, we're trying to do that before Thanksgiving. I don't know when this episode is going to, to air. But that's our goal. <laughs> and um, if assuming we've met all of that criteria and it was important feedback, you know, we were doing it from an admin side. Anyway, we were basically yeah. on the back end going to monitor, but, having users be able to, to flag things that maybe wouldn't be offensive to us, but are offensive to them. That's, that's really important stuff. So it was good feedback and forced our hand to do this, do this type of work. So yeah, assuming that goes live. Yeah, no, that's- yeah, no assuming that goes live, we're basically going to go slow until February. So try to build the network effect around this thing. I uh, identify where things are, are not performing well, aren't scaling well on the system. Uh, what's works and what doesn't work from a marketing perspective. And then the plan is to take those lessons and invest in kind of the paid growth, the marketing, the cold outreach more aggressively in February. Oh, nice, nice. So we're targeting Q1 for any yeah. listeners out there who are looking for <laughs> a, a platform that, you know, is going to make their life easy, a.k.a. Manal Keen at Founder and Force Multiplier. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, that's, that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You know, along your lines about... When you talked about like founders and, you know, speaking to other founders and having a community, this is a little plug here, but we at Founder and Force Multiplier actually just launched into beta a founder community where we are, our goal is exactly that for founders to have a place to have a forum where they can, and from different, I mean, diversity is important, right? Different industries, different backgrounds, different stages. I mean, you learn so much from each other, right? And, and I think that's, that's key. That's key to success, which, you know, and I think the one thing that you said that really resonated with me is accepting reality. You have to accept outcomes. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, you have to accept that sometimes you will not su- succeed. And, so, you know, that mental fitness is so important. And hey, we're not perfect. We've all been there. We've all had a bad day. And then you break down and you're like, why am I? I'm, I'm better than this. Like, why am I breaking down right now? Like, and you reset, right? <laughs> but we're human. And I think that's, I think that's important. Um, so Michael, tell us, we heard your entrepreneur journey. Um, 
many entrepreneur journeys. You go out there. The, the, I've heard that you went back to get you know some sort of knowledge or gain formal education twice in two different fields. Um, what what do you do? You know, share with us a little insight onto you know how do you keep up to par with you know, the things that are going to matter to your company, your product, macro trends, knowledge, like how do you diversify your knowledge and where do you get it from? That's a great question. Um, I mean, a lot of different media sources. So a lot, I mean, I follow a lot of different entrepreneurs, a lot of venture capitalists on Twitter, and they're always pushing some short bits of good ideas or book recommendations, do a lot of reading, a lot of biographies, a lot of business books that you know, if you've been around me long enough, you'll see a couple stacks of, of books that you'd be like, did you really actually read this? And yeah, I have. I mean, most yeah. of the stuff, a lot of it kind of can be still down to like one or two things that really stick with you and can really help move the business forward and really help kind of refine how you're thinking about things. And there's, you know, a couple of books that have really stuck with me and really helped me shape that perspective. Uh, one is called Traction. Another is called Drive. And traction is just about, oh, those are good how you, yeah, how do you take like a huge idea and how do you break it down into something that's a, a goal that's achievable and keep ratcheting your way up there and make sure that the entire organization and team you're building is aligned towards that goal. So I love that book and drive. It's just about motivation and understanding what are the things that actually motivate people from a, from an empirical research perspective. And it's fascinating and it, the lessons learned from there are really kind of how when we hire and when we try to grow our team and grow our organization, the qualities we look for for people and the sort of incentives we, we try to build into this organization. That's that's awesome. And those are two amazing books. I've read them myself. So thank you for sharing. Um, so tell us something people are usually maybe surprised to find out about you. Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Let me think. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the non-developer non-book uh, reading side of michael you know I, I guess the family you know to do all this with like two young kids is crazy and like i really couldn't do it without my wife who's like a great partner and understands everything i'm going through and puts up you know there's good days and bad days and she's got to be there for, right. for the highs and the lows and um it, raising two young kids it's it's really like a partnership and there's days when, you know, she's got to take on more and days where I've got to take on more. And, and the ability to kind of do a startup like this with a young family, it's a, it's a whole other, it's it's doing it on difficult mode. But like I said, what I've genuinely <laughs> found, which is probably the most surprising thing people, somebody could say is like doing it with a young family has helped me. It's helped me find the balance necessary because this is a marathon. Anyone who tells you it's a sprint, like hasn't done this before. It's an endurance right. sport. You need to find a way to to take the breaks, to like rehydrate. And my family, it forced <laughs> you to do it. And they, I, I do find, find that reward from there. So that, that's, I guess, surprising. <laughs> yeah, no, that is, that is so good to hear. I mean, you know, I, I kind of face the same thing. My kids were very young when I was, you know, in the IB and anyone that's worked in the IB knows you work 90 hours a week. And there was a point where I was doing my MBA full time. I had just had a baby. Like she was literally six months old. I was running a team of 400 <laughs> at a large financial institution. Um, and I, I went to, I did my MBA full time and I had a toddler and people are like, well, how did you do that? I'm like, you know what? I learned the art of letting it go. I let go of so many things in my life that did not matter. I did not create a to-do list. I did the opposite. And I did have a mentor that kind of, you know, asked me what was important in my life. And I knew for me, like, I'll say right here, people get so worried. Like, if my child's not going to have their yogurt at 4 p.m. Central, they're <laughs> not going to combust, people. They're not going to combust. Like, it's okay. They're going to live. <laughs> like, my daughter would literally stay up to, like, 3 in the morning while I was studying. And then I would get up at 6 in the morning and go to work. But she's fine. Yeah. She's 12 yeah. now. Nothing happened to her because she didn't, um, you know, sleep, you know, regularly and have a bath at 6 p.m. every night and have her massage and you know, maybe it made my kids more resilient because she can sleep literally anywhere. Take her to a concert. She'll like 
if she's sleepy, she'll sit on the chair and go to sleep. <laughs> me there. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. That's, that's, so, it, it definitely, if it, it, it's not easy, but you know, it's not supposed to be. And uh, I think it makes you better. And like you said, it makes you focused. Where do you put your time? Makes you, you can't dwell on things because you don't have the time. You just right. kind of. You got to let it go it. and move on. Yeah. Yeah. Got to let it go. Find the most important thing to do in that moment and keep doing it and keep, and keep moving it forward. And like when you're with your kids, just, you know, be there, try to put all this stuff in, away and just, that's really important for them. And just having to do that for them gives you the break. Like having to actually put all this crazy stuff that's bouncing around in your head to just be present for that minute while you are giving them a bath is, is it's everything. Yeah. And that's, that's key. What you just said is whatever moment you're in, be present in that moment, because when yeah. we are trying to do too many things at one time, that's when we create the anxiety and the feeling of being overwhelmed and not really accomplishing because we're so stressed out about it. So really being purposeful in the moment you're at helps you kind of like traditionally, I guess, call it block tasking, but block task and give, you know, in a, for some people, it's not kids, it's different outlets, but whatever it is, you're being purposeful and you're creating sort of that. And I, I say this line because it's one of my favorite lines, but I tell people all the time because I had somebody tell me this is what does your silence sound like? I'll tell you, I was an extreme person when I was young. There was no silence. I did everything yeah. fast and full fledged and extreme. And then yeah. I crashed, burned and burned out. And now I teach people on how not to get there. <laughs> yeah. Some of those lessons you but, I think a lot of people just have to learn on their own. And it's like a hard, hard lesson yeah. to learn. But you, it, you can tell a lot of people, especially young entrepreneurs, like, you know, you need to take breaks. You need to clear your head. You need to take a minute. It's it's important, but I'll. So you, I mean, I didn't. I, I went just as hard as you're saying, and, and kind of ran into some of the same brick walls. Like, you, it really is an endurance sport. You need to take care of yourself physically. You need to take care of yourself mentally. You need to be there for the long run, and just you know, you need to be able to be like Teflon, so that when the the bad things come, yeah. you're still looking out at the horizon and say, you know what, we're just we're gonna keep going. It's, it's, we're, this is just another obstacle and we're just going to keep on going. We're going to laugh about this someday. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so much, Michael. That I'm sure that's going to resonate with a lot of people. And I love how, how you keep saying that, that this is an endurance sport because it is, it's not a sprint and we got to remember that. And for people out there that right now, I mean, I can just see it. I'm sure there's somebody in their car listening to this and they're just like, Oh my God, I'm like, I'm, I'm about to like die. Like where, what's, what's next? And really understanding that you got to take a step back and, and sometimes reset, reflect, and also just give yourself time. Like I create that space and I know it's not easy to do. So we're, you know, the, it falling forward is important and you learn it and some people learn it the hard way. And I know we, we have learned it the hard way. So, well, tell us, you know, for people out there and you said it a, a few times in different ways, but if there are people out there, no matter what age they're in, because I think everyone hears a story like, you know, you have this entrepreneurial spirit, you start something in college. And, you know, that's sort of like where we've heard, heard a few people, Mark Zuckerberg, et cetera. But people that are sort of matured in their corporate world and they they're out there and they, they have ideas like what is your advice to just try? Because so many people just don't try, but they have great ideas like. I'll talk to some individuals at networking events and I'm like, oh my God, you need to do this. Like, go do it, yeah. you know? Yeah. I, I mean, the most important thing is just to start. And I think most people, there's a lot of different ways to start. Starting doesn't necessarily mean you have to give away the security or the career you've built if, if it's really important to you. Starting can just mean, you know, writing a business plan. Starting can mean finding some designers to work with to start if it's software to start solidify your ideas, starting can mean just trying to understand who your target customer is or your target user is and trying to go have those initial conversations. We had tons of conversations with people before we wrote a line of code on this. And that was really, really important. Right. We, I worked with a great designer and took her designs and just paraded them around coffee shops to different podcasters and journalists and got their take on what we were doing and what 
made me actually take the leap full time is is the look in their eye when they saw it. And they're like, you know what? You know, because they're all skeptical. You know, and we were just reaching these people through like cold Instagram DMs. <laughs> and so when you show the the idea to them and you tell it and you see the light bulb go off in their head and they say, you know what, this is actually a pretty good idea. And I could see myself using this. That's going to give you, you need the validation. And when you get that validation enough, it gives you the confidence to go for this full time. And there's different ways to do it. You know, if, if once you get enough validation, nothing is going to stop you from driving it all the way forward. If you, if money is the problem, you need finance, you're going to go get the financing because you believe in what you're doing so much and you're going to knock down all the walls and knock on every door you go and go ask people for three referrals for other people that may be interested if they're not just anything that it takes to go get this done, you'll do it, but you need, you need that belief and that belief for me personally comes from that, that validation understanding that this is real this is something people want and like i said before understanding who it's not for going out and looking for the negative signal showing people the people who'd react negatively to it with parade the people who reacted negatively to it were like investigative journalists that use interviews for a gotcha moment They're like okay this will never work for me okay and then yeah some, I'm talking, I'm saying, you're probably right you know this is not for you and that's okay it's not it doesn't have to be for everyone it's better off if it's not right. Because if it's if you understand who it's most for, you know how to how to reach them, and you know how to actually deliver right. real value to them, and that's that's what that was. That's the most important thing I can tell people is start and start by looking for validation. Really, I love it. Thank you so much, Michael. We this has been such an inspirational discussion. Um, you're you're just so humble about everything you've done and. We know your journey's been very challenging and there's there's um, a silver lining coming up and it's just so exciting to hear. And we are really, you know, um, your cheerleaders back here uh, wanting wanting Braid to succeed. And, um, you know, are there, is there anything else you want to leave our audience with about Braid or yourself or anything out there to close us out? Just check us out, uh, braidit.com. Depending upon when this is live, there will either be a pre-register or download link. So let's see how the next week or two <laughs> go for us. And then just look out for us. If, you, if you're if you in the creator space, if you want to use interviews as a basis for your marketing, which a lot of businesses do these days, I think we're a great, we, we take a lot of the pain out of it. We make free up your time for it. We make sure we give you a platform to put your best foot forward. And we pack it up in the way that today's audiences want, which is these small kind of bite-sized clips that allow you to stay in people's attention for the course of several days. So look out for us. Woo! Love it. Yeah. Thank you, Michael, <laughs> so much for being on the call. Thank you so much for tuning into our podcast. If you love the show, please leave us a review. It really helps us get the podcast out to the leaders and force multipliers who need it. As you know, we love to share in experiences and grow together. If you are interested in coming on to our podcast or have a guest referral, please email us at info at founder and force multiplier.com. And all the information to reach us is linked below in the show notes. Thank you again and see you next week.